Hello and welcome to this lesson on radioactive decay, which is part of the nuclear physics topic in AQAA level physics. So, what we're going to look at in today's lesson is trying to mathematically calculate values of radioactive decay. So, if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the spontaneous and random nature of, radio of nuclear decay, determine the half lives of radioactive isotopes graphically, and recognise and use the expressions for radioactive decay, and then ultimately carry out investigations to consider the random nature of radioactive decay. So, in today's lesson, we're going to be covering the following part of the AQA A level physics specification 3.8.1.3 radioactive decay. So, when considering the radioactive decay of a substance, we've got to consider the graph of activity or the number of radioactive nuclei against time. So, we've got to consider what type of trend line is found for all radioactive decays, and it's an exponential decay curve when you think about the activity against the time. Now, if you wanted to describe the rate of decay for exponential decays, we would state that the radioactive decay drops off at a fast rate at the start of the decay but over time the rate of decay slows so after a prolonged period of time the rate of decay is very slow so right at the start of the process there's a large change in the rate of the decay and the change in rate of decay slows so after a long period of time there's very little change in the rate of decay now the reason why this is is because the chance for each nucleus to decay is the same so at the start there's lots of radioactive nuclei so therefore there's going to be lots of them decaying whilst at the end there's actually there's not as many radioactive nuclei but there's the same chance of each one decaying so there's very little uh, nuclei decaying however because the chance of decaying is the same the proportion of them decaying the percentage of them decaying remains constant now should the trend line of an activity against time graph ever intercept the x-axis and in theory it should never touch the x-axis axis because that's a feature of exponential decay. So as the rate of decay follows an exponential decay pattern, there has to be an exponential equation which can describe the gradient of the graph. So if the graph of the number of radioactive nuclei against time forms an exponential decay curve, then the equation linking the two factors must be an exponential equation. So the equation which links the values is as follows. n is equal to n0 e to the power minus lambda t, where n is the number of radioactive radioactive nuclei present, N0 is the original number of radioactive nuclei present, uh, lambda is the decay constant and T is the time elapsed in the nuclear decay. So this is an exponential equation that links the rate of decay with the time taken and it describes the gradient of the exponential decay curve. So this equation shows that the number of radioactive nuclei decreases exponentially with time. So as the, ra as the ra radioactive mass of the isotope and the activity also vary with time in a similar fashion as the number of radioactive nuclei, this previous equation format can also be used for these quantities. So we can use this for the number of radioactive nuclei by saying n is equal to n0 e to the power minus lambda t or the mass of radioactive nuclei which is m is equal to m0 e to the minus lambda t and then we can use it for radioactive activity where a is equal to a0 e to the power minus lambda t so in examination style questions you've got to use the appropriate equations with the appropriate values in the question given so if they give you activity values you use the equation in the blue if you are given the number of radioactive nuclei you would use the equations in the green and so on. Now these equations can be used for all the terms above because they all have the same relationship with radioactive decay. They're just different measures of the decay. So let's look at an example question. So a sample of radioactive material initially contains 1.2 times 10 to the 20 atoms of an isotope. The decay constant for the isotope is 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds to the minus 1. So calculate the number of atoms of the isotope remaining after a thousand seconds and the activity of the sample after a thousand seconds. So what you can see is as follows. In this first question, the first step you do is write out all the values given in the question. The second step is then work out the exponential term of the substance, so lambda t. And at this point, you substitute your values into the equation and calculate it with units and the correct significant figures. So we say n is equal to n0 e to the minus lambda t. So therefore it's 1.2 times 10 to 20 times by 
by e to the power minus 3.6. So it works it through to be 3.2 times 10 to the 18 nuclei, or number of atoms. And the, ac the activity after the sample of 1,000 seconds, well, you substitute the values into the equations and calculate with units and the correct sig figs. So we know that activity is equal to lambda n, and I mean, you could say it's minus lambda n, but at this point, it, it doesn't matter in terms of giving a negative value or not. So we say 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3, which is the decay constant, times by the, the number of nuclei which you've worked out in the previous question, 3.2 times 10 to the 18, so you get 1.2 times 10 to the 16 becquerels. Now, in the previous lesson, we've, we've calculated the radioactive half-life either in terms of ratios or in terms of graphs. However, we can link the decay constant to the half-life mathematically because you know that a high decay constant leads to a short half-life and a low decay constant leads to a long half-life. So the previous equation allows us to produce a mathematical equation linking the decay constant with the half-life because the half-life of a radioactive sample can be defined as the average time taken for the number of radioactive particles present to half from its original value and that the average time taken for the activity of a source to half from its original value. So we can take this definition and, sub and use this to substitute values into the exponential equation stated earlier because you know that for half-life t is equal to t a half and that for the number of radioactive nuclei at this point n is equal to 0.5 n0. It's half the number of radioactive nuclei that we had at the start because after one half-life it's halved once. So if we say we've got n0 at t equals 1 then therefore we've got n is equal to 0.5 n0 at time is equal to a half-life. So therefore n equals n0 e to the minus lambda t therefore becomes 0.5 n0 equals n0 e to the power uh, lambda to the times by t a half, the half-life, which we can therefore simplify to so therefore 0.5 is equal to e to the minus lambda t a half-life because we can just take out those n zeros because they're a common term on each side. At this point, we take the natural log of each side and say log 0.5 is equal to log e to the minus uh, lambda t a half. Now log in something brings the exponential terms down to normal terms. So at this point we can say the natural log and the e terms cancel out. So log a half is equal to minus lambda t a half. Now we also know that log a half is equal to minus log 2. That's just a bit of mathematics. So we can substitute that in. We can take the negative out of the term on the right hand side. So we can now say that log 2 is equal to lambda times by t a half. So therefore we can rearrange this and say that half-life is equal to log 2 over the decay constant. Now if you struggle to have values with log 2 in there you can estimate log 2 to 0.693. So this equation is the mathematical link between the half-life and the decay constant. So this shows us that the longer the half-life the smaller the decay constant as the probability of the decay per second is smaller. So let's have a look at an example question. A sample of radioactive material initially covers initially contains 1.2 times 10 to the 20 atoms of the isotope. The decay constant for the isotope is 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds to the minus 1. So use this to calculate the half-life of the substance. So we can now work this out because we can write out the equation where we say t a half is equal to log 2 over the decay constant. We then substitute our values into the equation and then we can work out our value to be 190 seconds to the correct units and the correct sig figs. Now you might say why are the units seconds? Well it's because the decay constant is given in seconds to the minus 1. So you divide by seconds to the minus 1, they then become seconds. So to summarise, we've learned the following on radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is a process where a nucleus changes to increase its stability. The radioactive decay is an exponential process. The rate of change is not constant. Now, the rate the radioactive decay is a random and spontaneous process, and half-life is the average time taken for the activity of a sample to half. So the activity after n half-lives is 0.5 to the power of the half-life times by a0, the initial activity. Activity is the number of nuclear decays per second by a radioactive source. It's the rate of disintegration. So activity is the change in the number of radioactive nuclei over the change in time. And the decay constant is the probability of a nucleus decaying in one second. Well, activity is equal to minus, because it's decreasing, lambda n. And we can then formalize this in a term to work our values by saying n is equal to n0 e to the power minus lambda t, or m is equal to m0 e to the power minus lambda t, or a is equal to a0 times by e to the power of minus lambda t, and 
finally the half-life is equal to log 2 over the decay constant, or the decay constant is log 2 over the half-life. So if we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to use the equation n is equal to n0 e to the minus lambda t, with the idea that activity is lambda n, and we can use this with also the idea of a is equal to a0 e to the minus lambda t, and the half-life equation is t to the half is equal to log 2 over the half-life. So if we've been successful, and learnt in today's lesson. We should be able to describe the spontaneous and random nature of nuclear decay and determine the half-lives of radioactive isotopes graphically whilst recognising and using expressions for radioactive decay including using the decay constant is equal to log 2 over the half-life or n is equal to n0 e to the power of minus lambda t. So thank you very much for watching today's lesson on radioactive decay which is part of uh, the nuclear physics topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.